we are going to talk a little bit about suspending and unsuspending holds today. This is also known to some library systems as freezing and unfreezing. So the same concept of freezing would be to suspend a hold is to say, I still want to be on this item, but um, I'm going on vacation or I have too many books checked out at the moment. I'm going to put some on suspended so they don't, I don't get that phone call from the library. To be able to access holds specifically, you can get to a hold via the patron's account or by the specific title that they're asking to suspend. So if I pull up a patron's account, I can go easily to the holds that they have on their um, account. I can see a little bit about all the information. So this first one is a great example. If I look way over to the right, the status is hold is suspended. So I actually know that that is a suspended hold right now. Another status example would be item is waiting here. So some information on these, the status is really helpful. A couple other things that, um, you may notice is I have a suspend column. So I actually can suspend right from my patron's account. So if they called and said, hey, etiquette and espionage, I'm ready to, not ready for that yet. So let's go ahead and suspend that. I can go ahead and click that suspend date. Now the two things that I wanna mention here, and we'll see it again on the actual hold screen, is if I click this suspend button, I'm going to get a little, pop up that gives me a date. And this is going to be slightly different from the hold page. So it's good to note that this exists differently and it may choose that you prefer to do it through the patrons account than the other way. So this is good to know. I can add a date here, but I do not need to. So if for some reason I the patron doesn't want to put a date, they're not sure, then we can leave this date as indefinitely. This would require that manual intervention later when they call to say, I'm back from vacation, I'm back from surgery, my TBR list is completely empty, and I'm ready to unsuspend all my holds. So let's go ahead and add a date to that. We'll do the end of August, and then I'm going to click that suspend. Now you can see the difference. This one is a indefinite suspension, and this one is suspended until the 27th. I'm going to click this title, open it in a new tab because I'm a tab hoarder, and you can actually see from the hold screen from the bib record, we're connected to the bib, bib record here, you can see that normal and that hold option. You can see that gray button says unsuspend and then that date. If I wanted to, they called, I could easily go ahead and unsuspend. That's going to clear that date and make that hold um, come up in my holds um, queue if it's ready to pick up. If I came to the title via the hold on the bib record, the same screen is going to exist and I could easily go ahead and hit the suspend button. But the one thing that is different from this screen is the suspend button is just going to do that indefinite and we may want to remind ourselves, hey, let's put a date in here because I'm not going to get that pop up and then hit that suspend button. I'm pop back over to my other screen. Let's go ahead and look. If I hit this resume button from my patron screen, that would be what I'm calling my manual intervention, allowing me to go ahead and unsuspend those holds, clicking that resume button. So now I've gone ahead and um, made all this patron's books unsuspended and they will, when they're ready for me to pick up, I'll be aware of that. I also from this page can go ahead and suspend all holds on a specific date. If I click that, I can go ahead and see all my holds are suspended until that date. I cannot suspend a hold that is here waiting for me. And so that is how we can suspend and unsuspend holds.